Virginia Tech football used to be one of the powers in college football. Yes, they never won the big game under head coach Frank Beamer, but that doesn't matter because his impact on this football program is ingrained in everything they do up to this day. And today I am joined by one of my best friends, Jackson from JD Productions. We're gonna talk about Virginia Tech football. He currently goes to Virginia Tech, knows a lot about Virginia Tech football. We're gonna give you the complete rundown of everything that has happened up to this point and just why Virginia Tech never got over the hump. I mean, guys, they were actually one of the best programs in college football, if you remember. I know a lot of people forget about them, but they were consistently in the top 10. They always had a shot at the national championship game. They just always fell short by a little bit. And I actually think this might be one of my best downfalls I've ever made. So before I begin, please, if you could leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, that helps me out a bunch. You can always undo it and it's free, but most importantly, it helps me keep bringing content to you guys. It would mean the world if you decide to do so. So now let's get into the downfall of the Virginia Tech Hokies football program program. Blacksburg, Virginia is typical country land. It's a very beautiful place there. And then to mention their football program, they have one of the best entrances in college football history and really in all of sports at the iconic Lane Stadium. The walk from the green to the Hokie Stone where you reach for excellence while playing Inter Sandman is one of the hypest entrances in all of sports. You might know Virginia Tech football for Frank Beamer, their lunch pail mentality, their turkey mascot, Michael Vick being their quarterback leading them to a national championship game. But but first, let's talk about the guy Frank Beamer, the hometown hero who led the Hokies for so many years. Frank Beamer grew up an hour from Blacksburg. He has won 238 games, he has 7 conference championships, 23 bowl game appearances, and a national title appearance. He is really the greatest coach to probably never win at all. His record at Virginia Tech totals 198, 95, and 2. And for his career record, he has 240 wins, 118 losses, and 4 ties. Since the start of the 1995 season, Ohio State is the only Power 5 program that has produced more seasons with 10 or more victories than Virginia Tech. Ohio State has 15, Virginia Tech has 13, and Beamer took them to a bowl game for 23 straight years. 23 straight years that's crazy and not only that that record still stands to this day and they currently have the longest record for most bowl game appearances by any program in college football as i speak frank beamer iconically played beamer ball where scoring was kind of hard for them so they had to score on all three sides of the ball with offense defense and special teams he was the head coach there from 1987 to 2015 and he got there in december of 1986 now when he got there things were not great they had two winning seasons during Frank Beamer's first six as the head coach. And during that time, they had a record of 24, 40, and two. The Hokies went two, eight, and one in their final season of that stretch. And thankfully, the school decided to keep him because they really didn't have a great history with football. And honestly, if he started out like that today, he would have been gone. So it's a really good thing they kept him. Now they were an independent school, but joined the Big East for the 1991 season. And in 1993, the Hokies earned a trip to the Independence Bowl, their first ever bowl game under Beamer. With a win in that game, the Hokies notched only the fourth nine win season in school history at the time. This was a very important step for this program. And since 1993, the Hokies have had 18 straight winning seasons, appearing in bowl games in each of them. And he coached seven straight 10 win seasons, the NCAA's longest active streak. And to even add to that, they have appeared in five BCS bowl games. 1995, the regular season, the Hokies climbed up to the 13th ranked spot. They made the Sugar Bowl. They beat the Texas Longhorns. And this was the most successful season ever for the Hokie program. And 1999 was their dream team. Michael Vick led them. He had some very memorable moments, including the miracle in Morgantown and getting to the national championship game. They had a perfect season with a record of 11-0 heading into the Sugar Bowl. They played Florida State for the national title, but the Hokies trailed 28-7 late in the second quarter. However, they somehow climbed their way back into the game and were winning 29-28 entering the fourth. And Beamer and Vic had the Hokies up by one point. However, they lost that lead and the Seminoles won the title. And Virginia Tech hasn't been this close to the promised land since then. The Hokies finished third in the AP poll and second in the coaches poll, this was their highest ranking in school history. Frank had so much talent on that 99 team. That team changed the program and Mike was such a unique quarterback. Not many were like him then and really not many have been like him since then. They were such a complete team and this was a small town school in the middle of the country that made it to the top of the sport. This was a big deal for them. The following season in 2000, the Hokies were once again contenders for the national championship, but a loss to number three Miami early in November cost them when Michael Vick got injured. They still won their 
their bowl game over Clemson, but just imagine if Vic hadn't gotten hurt. I mean, that team could have competed for a title. Now, after that season, Frank almost left for North Carolina, and he did accept the job in November of 2000, but then he went back to Blacksburg and decided to stay there only if all of his coaches got a raise, and man, it's a good thing he didn't leave the program, and it shows what type of guy Frank Beamer is. He really cares about his coaches. Now, there was also talk later in his career of taking over Alabama or the Green Bay Packers. I mean, could you imagine that? But he stayed for the Hokies, and they had a lot of success even after that championship appearance. The ACC expanded in 2003, and Virginia Tech went to the ACC, and at the start of the 2004 season, the Hokies faced number one and eventual national champion USC, and this was a great game played at FedEx Field, but they lost the game. Now, they still went on to win the ACC championship. However, in the Sugar Bowl, they lost to Auburn. They almost came back in the game, but they just ran out of time. And then the next season, Marcus Vick, the younger brother of Michael Vick, took over for them at the quarterback position. Now, he had off the field incidents, but he returned to play in 2005, and he went off, taking them to an 11-2 record and a number seven finish in the AP poll. The Hokies started off the season 8-0 and were ranked number three, but they faced number five Miami, and they lost that game at home, and it cost them a chance at the title. And then they lost in the ACC championship to Florida State in a close game, and in their bowl game, well, Marcus Vick had more problems because he tackled Elvis Dumerville on Louisville and stomped on his leg, and after Tech winning, four days later, Vick got in trouble for reckless driving, and he had so many incidents prior to this that he was dismissed from the team in January of 2006. But really, imagine if he didn't have these incidents. I mean, he could have possibly helped them get to a national championship game. Next year's team was good, but just not good enough, and maybe he could have been there to help them. 2006 was filled with consecutive losses to Georgia Tech and Boston College, and the team finished the season strong, though, winning six in a row and being invited to the Chick-fil-A Bowl, and they played Georgia, and they were up 21-3, to but Sean Glennon had so many turnovers that the Bulldogs came back and won the game. Now, 2007 was a bit of a rough year. It started off with the tragedy that happened on campus with the shooting, but this team did bring in number one dual threat quarterback Tyrod Taylor. This team was very good, and if they just hadn't lost to Boston College and Matt Ryan, they would have had a shot at the national championship game, and I'm not even joking to you guys. This was a hectic season in college football, and maybe they could have taken Ohio State's spot in the national championship game. Their only loss that year was to LSU, besides the Boston College game. I mean, this team was very good. They had another chance at a championship game, but again, they just fell short. Now, this team still made the Orange Bowl, but this year they played one year wonder, the Kansas Jayhawks, and they fell short versus them. 2008 was filled with ups and downs. They lost their opener to East Carolina. They had losses to Boston College, Florida State, and Miami all in the regular season. Now, somehow they still made the ACC championship and won that game. They made the Orange Bowl and they beat Cincinnati. 2009, they finished top 10. They went 10 and 3. They lost close games versus Alabama to start, and then Georgia Tech and North Carolina, and it cost their season again. They were ranked as high as number four, but they still made it to the Chick-fil-A Bowl, beating Tennessee. But 2010 was not a great start either with their high expectations. They lost their first game at FedEx Field to Boise State, who was ranked number three in the nation, and they lost by three points, which really hurt. And the next week, they lost to an FCS school in James Madison. Now, if they didn't lose either of these games, that would have been huge because after that, they went on a 10-game win streak, but they made the Orange Bowl again. Seems like they always played there, and they lost to Stanford. Now, this was Tyrod's last game, and in his four years there, the Hokies won three ACC title games, including one in 2010 when he was a senior and earned ACC Player of the Year after throwing for 24 touchdowns and only five interceptions. 2011, they really could have used Tyrod though. It's a shame they didn't redshirt him because they were 11 and three, and if they could have just beaten Clemson in their two games first them, that could have helped them get to another championship game. But instead, they lost their bowl game to Michigan, and this was when Logan Thomas took over at quarterback and his era began. 2012 was one of Frank's bad years though. They went seven and six, they won their bowl game though over Rutgers. 2013, Tech went eight and five, and the rise of Florida State and Clemson in conference is what hurt them. But even though they weren't on their side of the conference, it still didn't matter, and Tech lost their bowl game versus UCLA. In 2014, Tech could have had a great season. They actually beat Ohio State in their second game of the year, and this Ohio State team went on to win the national championship. But after that win, Tech lost a bunch of games. Now, they still won the military bowl over Cincinnati, and they finished seven and six. And finally, we have reached the end of the Frank Beamer era. He announced that he would retire at the conclusion of the 2015 season in November, and this was another average year, sadly, for him to close out his career. They lost to Ohio State in their first game, and the Hokies went 6-6, six and six, but thankfully, they sent out Frank on top by beating Tulsa in the Independence Bowl 55-52. But now, I'm going to hand it over to Jackson from j &D Productions, one of the best channels on YouTube, one of my best friends. Jackson is a student at Virginia Tech. He knows everything about tech football, especially everything current. Jackson, take it away. Let us know about the Justin Fuente era and everything that has happened after Frank Beamer left. On November 27th, 2015, former Memphis head coach Justin Fuente was named the
the new head coach of the Virginia Tech Hokies. Fuente was previously the offensive coordinator at TCU during their prime Andy Dalton years, and he also played a huge role in helping Paxton Lynch and Dalton go into the NFL draft as first round picks. Looking back, a lot of fans were interested in other head coaching options like Kirby Smart, Matt Rule, or Tom Herman. But let's be honest, people wanted Justin Fuente, and they got him. The transition from Frank Beamer to Justin Fuente felt like an easy one. The Hokies started strong in 2016 and ended up finishing Fuente's first year with a regular season record of 9-3 and, and an overall record of 10-4. and They went all the way to the ACC Championship game where they lost to Clemson 42-35. Then they played in the 2016 Belk Bowl in Charlotte, North Carolina, defeating Arkansas 35-24. After the season, Justin Fuente was named the 2016 ACC Coach of the Year and received plenty of other accolades. But since 2016, Tech has not won a single bowl game under Fuente and have gone on to win 9, 6, and 8 games in each season. Not that these are bad seasons by any stretch, but it's not quite the Frank Beamer standards that we previously were used to in Blacksburg. In 2017, the Hokies climbed as high as number 12 and 13 in the AP poll, but whenever they played a ranked team, which happened twice, they lost. Those two losses came to Clemson and Miami. In 2018, again, they climbed all the way to number 13 in the rankings, but this time they continued to lose big games in the season, and they even went on to lose to Old Dominion, being a key marquee victory in Old Dominion's program. In the most recent full season under Justin Fuente in 2019, the Hokies went 8-5 after a slow start but picked up under new quarterback Hendon Hooker. After the 2019 season, the Hokies lost another marquee member of their coaching staff when longtime defensive coordinator Bud Foster retired in November. Foster was the longtime defensive coordinator under Frank Beamer and then later spent time under Justin Fuente. Foster played a big role in helping the Hokies be known for their stout defense. He even introduced the lunch pail, which was the trademark of their defense, where the player of the week ran out with it every week out of the tunnel. After Foster retired, they decided to retire the lunch pail as well because they wanted to build new traditions. Since Foster left, he's been replaced with defensive coordinator Justin Hamilton, a former Hokie player back in his days. The loss of Foster has certainly been something we've seen early in 2020, as the defense has seen some of their fair struggles, especially in stop the run. Early in the season, they were ranked number 19 in the nation after two wins to start off the season, but ended up losing in a shootout to North Carolina. The loss certainly wasn't a dagger to a very good North Carolina team, but they did follow it up by losing to Wake Forest and more iconically, Liberty. The Liberty loss perfectly exemplified how Hokies fans have felt for the last couple years. Losing to some of the inferior teams in the state is something that Virginia Tech has done over the past couple of years. Most notably, Old Dominion, which I previously mentioned, obviously Liberty, and another one to add to that is actually going to be FCS school James Madison. All three of these schools are schools in Virginia that are certainly far out of the Power Five that the Hokies have lost to. Virginia Tech is still far from a bad college football program, but it's not exactly up to the same standards that a lot of the fans have expected over time, something I've seen firsthand here on campus. I personally didn't grow up a Virginia Tech fan, but now that I'm actually here, I've obviously completely indulged myself into the way of the Hokies. Now I, like all the other students here, just can't wait to get back into Lane Stadium and start jumping again for Inner Sandman and watch the Hokies play again. Thank you, Jackson, for joining me on this downfall video. I really appreciate your insight, and you have definitely slowly turned me into a Virginia Tech fan. Tech is far from a despairing program or really even in a downfall. But like Jackson mentioned, it is a little bit disappointing seeing this program slip a little bit because they just keep losing the close games they should win. Now, some fans really complain about how they don't recruit well in the state. People hate that. And really looking on social media, a lot of Virginia Tech fans just want Fuente gone. Their offense has been good, but it's that defense that just hasn't been there. And I saw the perfect comment that said, defense doesn't win college football titles, but you need it to stay in the game. That is so true in today's college football. And Virginia Tech is just not recruiting the defenses they used to have. And really they need to bring back the lunch pail. Now Jackson and I really enjoyed making this video. So again, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out. Jackson's channel with his friend Darren is down below. They are the best. Check them out if you haven't already. Virginia Tech really is a better program than I remembered. I didn't think they were that good, but looking into the details, this is probably the most overlooked program in college football history. I personally hope they can get back to the top of the sport. I would love to see that happen, especially with the fan base that they have and an entrance unlike any other in college football. The Virginia Tech Hokies will be back. It is only a matter of when.